the electronic stabilization on modern action cameras is one of the best innovations that has come of that genre of camera but it does have its limitations for one thing once you hit low light it can become more of a problem than it is a help and that's because this electronic stabilization requires fast shutter speeds as soon as you go below a certain shutter speed, the image becomes blurry because what's happening is you're effectively having to pan around the sensor and any motion blur that is introduced via violent movement gets transferred into the final image. So these electronic stabilization systems need a fast shutter speed in order to work effectively and to look good. And if you're doing a sport like mountain biking, where you might end up under a very dark forest canopy, for example, then HyperSmooth quite often falls apart. And that goes for any other model of camera from any other make that uses a similar kind of system as well. So how do we get around this? How do we change it? How do we get good HyperSmooth performance in low light with a GoPro? I've got a solution and I'm going to say from the outset that this isn't a quick fix. It does require a little bit of work and you're going to have to grade your footage afterwards. It's not a case of recording in camera and just sending it out to social media and bish bash bosh, there you go. It's not massively involved, but it does require a few settings to be changed on the camera. Okay, so the GoPro has a really neat ability in that it can have GoPro's labs firmware installed on it. Now, for this, you're really going to need a GoPro Hero 11 to get the best out of it, though a lot of this still does apply to the Hero 10. So what does labs firmware do? It allows you to get the kind of control of the camera that isn't available directly from the camera settings on the default firmware. And you can go quite in depth into it. It has all kinds of complicated things, including a scripting language you can use, but you can use a simple app to create the QR codes and you can save them out as a photo on your phone for quick scanning for different settings that you might require on the camera. Now, the most important setting here is the reset command, which if you cock things up, reset your camera back to the default settings and wipes out any cockups you might have made while setting the camera up with Labs firmware. It took me a while to discover this, uh, but it's an important setting to have. So I have a QR code set up specifically to reset the camera. Now you can do all sorts of things with the log mode. You can get the image looking flatter, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep the standard log stroke flat profile of the camera in place. And that's because by adjusting the log profile, you might get a flatter looking image, but you're not necessarily getting more dynamic range. And that's important because there's no point in pushing things in camera if it's not going to gain you anything. So let's go through the settings one by one. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to set the noise reduction to zero or one in the case of the QR labs coding. What that will do is it will allow you to keep the shadow detail without having it turn to mush by GoPro's default noise reduction settings. This will result in a noisier image, but that's the trade-off you make. More shadow detail at the expense of more noise. And this is a case of compromise all the way through because you have to ask yourself, what do you prefer? the horrible motion blur and the mushy shadow detail that's created by the default noise reduction or crisp stabilization at the expense of noise in the image. I know I would prefer a noisier image over one that is very mushy looking and with motion blur all over the place. This is all helped by the 10 bit color mode on the GoPro. It gives us more tonal range to work with when we grade later. So all that kind of thing works in our favor. Because turning the noise reduction off creates a lot of noise, that puts a lot more stress on the codec. So what we're also going to do is we're going to increase the bit rate of the camera. This will give us much more bandwidth in the recording. Now with the labs firmware, this can go up to 200 megabits per second, but I haven't had much success with that. So I always bring it down to sort of 180 or 190, but that gives us enough bandwidth to cope with the extra noise in the image. Now it should be noted that when you increase the bit rates like this, you will likely need a much faster SD card. So you'll need a very fast SD card to cope with uh, this recording rate and have reliability as well. 
Another setting that you might have noticed that I've got in there is the M24 Hertz setting. This is completely optional, but what it does is it makes the camera record integer 24p. In other words, normally when you have the camera in 24p mode, it's actually uh, recording 23.976 FPS rather than a rounded 24 FPS. Now, integer 24 is what they use in the cinema, but I mean, modern computer software deals with this stuff really easily and software deals with it pretty seamlessly. So this isn't a setting that you must have. It's just a setting I like to have on my camera. The next setting is one of the most important of all, and that is setting the minimum shutter speed. So in order for HyperSmooth to work effectively, it needs a fast shutter. And there is a sweet spot at which it starts to become less effective. And it's just below 180th of a second. So what we're going to do with the labs firmware is we're going to set the camera so that it will never drop below 180th of a second shutter speed. This will ensure that no matter how violent the motion, you won't get that horrible mushy motion blur that you might have seen when you've taken mountain bike footage in a dingy forest somewhere. This is incredibly important. And even if your footage is dark, it does mean that combined with the reduced noise reduction setting that you can still get crisp motion in your footage with, with really good hyper smooth results. Now, another setting that is it's not so much important, but it gives us a lot more to play with a bit later on is the wide command. Now, what this does is it puts the camera into a wide gum up mode rather than Rec 709. Normally, the camera is using Rec 709 color. The only time that it isn't is when you put the camera into native white balance mode. You'll notice when you put it into native white balance mode, the image does become flatter looking than it does when you have it with a, a manual white balance setting or an auto white balance setting, even when you're in the flat color profile. And the reason for that is because the camera is using the wider gamut rather than Rec. 709. You might have noticed highly saturated colors sometimes get crushed or flattened and there's no detail there. And that's because of the Rec. 709 color space. What the wide command does is puts it into a wider color space and with a 10 bit recording of the Hero gives you a lot more to play with and reduces the chance of those highly saturated colors losing detail as a result. Now, why use the wide command rather than the native white balance setting? It's simple. What wide does is it allows you to use that wider color gamut with a manual white balance setting or the auto white balance setting. It stops you having to do the kind of weird and wonderful color correction that you have to do when you put the camera into the native white balance setting. So it just makes things easier all around. It gives you the advantages of the native white balance setting while also giving you accurate color. Now, in the footage that I've shot for this video, as an example, I set the camera to 5500K on my white balance setting and use the wide command. And you'll see that it looks flatter than normal when you put it into the flat color profile mode. Before we start recording with our camera, there are a couple more settings that we need to set within the standard GoPro menus. One of these is your max ISO. If you're recording during daylight, you know, you could go to a max of 400. But for the sake of the footage that I shot the other day, I set this to a maximum of 800 ISO. Another setting that you'll need to set is your EV compensation. Now, what I'm about to say will go against everything that you think you might need to do. You actually need to set it to a minus EV. And in this case, I set it to minus two EV. So yes, that is correct. A two stops under setting. Now it might seem extreme, but what you have to remember is that we're getting a lot more shadow detail. And if we're going into a forest canopy, then you'll get bright highlights coming through as well as very dark regions. So we don't want to blow out the highlights. We don't want to turn those shafts of light that might be coming through the trees into white blobs. So we're setting a minus two EV to protect those highlights, knowing that with the noise reduction turned off, we've got a lot of latitude to bring the shadows back up again. Now, you know, you could set it to a slightly safer EV set 
setting like minus one it's entirely up to you and it's probably a good idea to experiment but for the sake of this I'm setting it to a minus two EV setting. Okay so I'm now in Resolve and I brought the footage in and as you can see we've got our lovely outdoor bluebird sky footage here and you'll notice it looks quite flat doesn't it? I'm using the normal GoPro flat profile. Well it's due to that wide gamut setting which we put in earlier which allows us to use the wide gamut that would normally be used with the native white balance setting automatically but it allows us to use that color gamut with every other white balance setting from auto and manual so I've set my white balance to 5500k and I've got the wide color gamut enabled via the labs firmware which gives us this much flatter looking image so as you can see it's all bluebird skies it's me doing my horrendous mountain biking skills down this track. This isn't a mountain biking video. I'm absolutely horrendous at mountain biking. I'm on a hardtail and I'm a scaredy cat. So anyway, let's just watch a bit of footage here. So we're on the out outdoors, nice bright sunshine. It was a really hot day. Okay, you get the idea. So we come down the hill and we hit this little track and what happens well this happens oh it's pitch black <laughs> right okay so what do we do about this well for one thing what i need to say is that even to my eyes when I was in that particular forest area, particularly coming out of the bright sunshine into there, it was very, very dark. So even to my eyes at the time, it was a very dark situation. And it's a kind of situation where if we hadn't have changed the settings via the lab's firmware, this footage would have been full of motion blur and the shadows would be mush. Now, you're probably looking at this going, well, hang on a minute. We can't even see anything in the shadows, let alone have them turn to mush by the noise reduction of the camera. So we've turned the noise reduction off. And that gives us a noisier image. And, you, you know, OK, you can't see it at the moment. But if I turn on this very rudimentary grade that I've just done, um, please don't hold me to this grade. I just did this very quickly. It's just to illustrate a point. So let's just turn the grade on. Wow. OK. So a bit oversaturated. Um, but you can see that the shadow detail within the forest is all there. Okay, yes, it's noisy. It is noisy. It, that's an inescapable fact that you're, you know, you're going to have to deal with that. That's as a result of us turning off the noise reduction in the camera. But what that's given us is all this shadow detail. When the noise reduction is on its default setting, a lot of this detail would be lost. It would just literally turn to mush. It wouldn't be there. But what turning the noise reduction off does is it gives us all that shadow detail. We can bring it out. And yes, it is noisy, but there are so many advanced pieces of noise reduction software on the market that that isn't a problem. Now you can do it within Resolve, you can do it with Neat Video, you can use Topaz as well, that, that will do it. So there are multiple options there. So don't worry about the noise level, we can deal with that later. The point is that we can bring out this shadow detail and if we watch the footage, you will see that what would normally be full of motion blur all over the place looks like this. it's pretty much the same as it is out in the bright sunshine. And that's because we limited our shutter speed to 180th of a second. We told it, do not go below that. Now, strangely, we did use a minus two EV for this camera as well. Why would we do that? Well, you know, you're in a, a forest setting like this. There's lots of contrasting light. By turning that noise reduction off, we can bring up a lot of shadow detail. But at the same time, we don't want to blow out the highlights, you know, when things are coming through the trees. You know, there's still some blowout in a on occasion, but pools of light like this, 
we don't want them to end up being bright pieces of blown out highlight, which you, you would often get if you left the camera in its normal setting. But because we're using the wide color gamut, we're using the log profile of the camera and we're turning off the noise reduction and we're also putting a minus two EV to protect those highlights, we can bring those shadows up and everything's looking good. You know, I mean, it's as I say, it's noisy, but we can deal with that. And as well as that, as I said, this environment was incredibly dark even to my eyes actually being there it wasn't like the, the camera was capturing something that was wildly different to what i was seeing with my eyes it was very dark in there so it's done as far as i can see it's done a pretty remarkable job at keeping that shadow detail there allowing us to bring that up and don't worry about the noise we can we can deal with that with noise reduction software but you will see as well that when you transition you'll need a separate grading from the outdoors to under the forest canopy and you'll need a transition there to bridge those gaps so this method it's you know it's a bit more effort and it involves some editing and it involves color correction it's not a quick fix to low light performance it requires a little bit of jiggery pokery but it does show what you can get out of a GoPro if you set it correctly. I don't think any other camera on the market allows you to do this. The, the ability to tune the settings like this is unique to the GoPro and I think is really good. I think the, the Action 4 from DJI, you can turn the noise reduction off as well in the new camera. So that is an option for that camera in low light as well, as long as you can set that shutter such that it's not going to go below a certain speed, thereby ruining the stabilization effect so i hope this has been of help to you i'd like to hear your comments uh, below and if you've any experience of doing this yourself and the kind of results that you've got from it but yeah i hope this has been of help to people out there and if you like what i do please like and subscribe and yeah i will see you in the next video